Alrighty, if you've ever thought about starting your own photo studio, today is gonna to be a video that's gonna help you out a ton. Because the thing about having a photo studio is you can make a lot of extra money. You can make a lot of extra contacts. I'm gonna share my experience of opening my own studio, Five Point Studio, and right outside downtown LA. I'm in a different studio today, but I'm gonna go through what I call the good, the bad, and the ugly of owning your own studio. Now, you don't have to be a photographer to listen to this, but you probably are, or you have some experience in it. But I do know that there are makeup artists and filmmakers and all these people that have their own studios. Let's break it down to why I decided to have my own studio. Number one, I started my studio because I thought that my career was over and I, and I gotta be really honest about that. I thought, you know what? I am not getting booked anymore. I had surrounded myself with bad people. I had surrounded myself with bad agents and managers and guidance and everything. And I started to let them chip away at me. Like they would tell me things like, hey, you're not booking a lot of clients right now because you're too fat. Literally, this is what they would tell me. And I would get postcards in the mail from personal trainers that they were like, hey, consider hiring a personal trainer. Now, it's incredibly cruel, right? But that's just what it is. And it's my fault for staying so long in that business with them. I got really frustrated and I got really frustrated at the same time with how the industry treated photographers and artists and everything. So I put my camera down. I was done. I, I didn't want to do that anymore. And it's a really scary time for an artist because when you are your work, then all of a sudden when your work isn't happening anymore, what happens is, is that you're hearing from the world, you don't matter anymore. Like you, you are not important and you have no more value. So I decided to open my own studio and I thought, okay, I know enough about the industry that I'm going to use other people's budgets. I'm going to use that location item, that line item, and I'm going to make sure that I can earn a living from that. And I did. And I moved into this really old studio in Lincoln Heights. And it was the original Ralph's or the second or third ever Ralph's in the whole company. I got the whole attic above that. It was 5,000 square feet. It didn't have a bathroom that worked. We had to get plumbers. It didn't have, it had one plug in that entire thing. I had to bring all that stuff in. I had to bring in everything. I spent months and months and months in there just doing that entire thing by myself. That experience is what's going to help you decide if you should open your own studio. And if I did it today, would I still do it again? The good, the bad, and the ugly. What is the good part of having a studio? There's potential to make more money. There's potential to make money from other people's budgets. You'll get music videos and you'll get movies and you'll get budgets for people that just have meetings and meetups and yoga groups and all of that. So you can make some money off of this. There's a lot of great potential in it. And I did that. I had like Ava Longoria came in and filmed the movie there. I had Christian Siriano came in and did his E special there. I had people rent it out before the Grammy Awards and it was just a big studio for them to be able to bring their celebrity clients and have them pick out the different dresses and everything. I did all of that. I got to see how people lit up their stages and uh, what kind of cameras and lenses they use and how sets were run. All of that's incredible. It's an incredible lesson. So if you want to open a studio, that's one massive part to it. The second part of it is that you actually get to meet incredible people. You get to meet other directors and other artists and other talent and you're like, hey, other makeup artists. And you get to say, would you want to work on my shoe? Everybody is coming to you. So you are the epicenter. You get to have a say in how the culture of that community develops in that neighborhood at least. That's a huge, huge ordeal. The other thing about having that is that you have the potential of making a name for yourself. So people would go, Walid, you know, the guy with the white birthmark and he's, he's got that big new studio right outside of downtown. That that right there helps brand you. So people are always like, yeah, it's Five Point Studio, but it's Walid's studio. So people would come in, who is Walid? Oh, he's this guy that. People find out about you. So then people start uh, taking your number. People start looking at your work. People start Googling you. It's huge in that way. So that's one of the big, big perks of having a studio also, the other one is there's opportunity to shoot more. I'm sure that's not in the back of your mind. I'm sure that's right in the front. You have your white site, you have your windows, you have your dark space, your white space, you have your wood floors, your brick walls, rooftops, whatever your studio is like, you will have that. So you get to shoot more. And that's a really, really big opportunity to build your portfolio, to get to the level of career that you want to do. Let's talk about some of the bad things about having your own studio. 
All right, I'm also setting up some stuff, but some of the bad things of having your own studio is this. There's a potential to lose a lot of money. If you keep in mind, I told you, okay, so I came into the studio. I was the only one that put in electrical outlets. The plumbing had to be fixed. There were holes in the walls. There were a couple of mice that we had to get rid of. There's a lot of stuff. There were leaks. There were so many things that cost me a whole bunch of money. So when you get a studio, understand that you're going to be spending a whole whole lot of money on making sure that you get it up and running the second thing is there's a lot of liability like for you just to just these lights these lights falling on somebody is a whole lot of liability so these are things that you have to insure for these are things that you have to do waivers and disclaimers for these are things that you have to get cameras in the corners for something to really really think about if you are not the type of person that wants that kind of liability on you then it's something to consider a lot of things like like things like triggers were missing people just this is what they would do they would just put this in their bag and they take it it's a lot of liability in a business sharpies that people steal people stole sharpies people stole sandbags and people stole like clamps and things like that this is what people took and this was a whole lot of liability the setup may not be exactly what you think it is so when you look at the setup like yeah, this right here is an all white studio. Well, somebody had to paint the wall. Somebody had to make sure that all the plugs were in. Somebody had to make sure that there was a mirror and a makeup station and all of that. Another thing that you have to think about is that there's a chance that you're going to photograph a lot less. I photographed a whole, whole lot less. I was busy being a studio manager. I was busy painting the white site. I was busy booking calls, I was busy trying to hold meetings, I was busy giving tours, I was busy going to the hardware store and buying more paint and more supplies and more cleaning supplies and everything. Like you can imagine, you have to do everything. You are the CEO and you're the janitor also. Are you going to be responsible for all of that? Because that's a whole lot of extra work that you're gonna be able to do. You may not be able to shoot the way you want. You may not be able to have access to doing all that because you're doing everything else. You're wearing so many different hats. And then there is the ugly part. Oh my God, the ugly. We talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's talk about that too. Here's the ugly part. The cleanup. It took me, my studio was, this one is probably about 500 square feet, 400 maybe. My studio was 5,000. Just me sweeping it took 45 minutes and that's after I became good. Then it's touching up all people, like standing on the wall like this. People will stand on the wall and do this and put their foot up. And then you go and you clean up all their footprints and you're retouching things and you're doing inventory. And so that, that to me became ugly in that I would spend one and two hours on in the beginning and the back end of each session making sure that I cleaned up and I, that I did it the right way and that I left it the right way for the next client. The other thing is it could really soil your name. Like, here's the thing. There was a photographer who's on a list, you know, the Me Too list. And I don't know if it's like a real list or not, but I had heard about this person after he booked my studio. So he was in there photographing a lot of models in my studio and I didn't see a problem, but then so many models came forward and spoke about the bad care that he gave them. And I'm just telling you that in the most conservative way, but there were some horror stories. What if he did that in my studio? What if he did that in your studio? What if like there was a way that that could damage your entire reputation, your whole, whole business? This can happen because it's happening on your home turf. And then here's another ugly part. There are companies like PeerSpace, there's companies like Gigster. My studio was one of the very first on PeerSpace that they asked me to come in. So I sold or I rented the space to somebody right down here that uh, they were shooting a lookbook. Now, when we did the lookbook, it was a great day. I even gave them, I think like 45 minutes or one hour extra. They were great. They're like, oh, Walid, this is so, so, so amazing. Okay, well, that's great. But when they went back, they complained to peer space that I was rude to them and that I kicked them out early and that I was late. That's not what happened at all. When they did that, peer space is more interested in that person that's bringing them money. So peer space took away all of my money and gave them back a refund. So they got to use my studio for free and I got reprimanded for it. I didn't do anything. Peer space was a one-sided rule. Now I hope that they've changed their rules since 
But my attitude was, take me off your damn website. Are you gonna have protection from different people? What kind of insurance do you need? When I was getting insurance, they were saying, well, you gotta have coverage in case somebody accuses somebody of some kind of assault. You gotta be covered too. You gotta make sure that you're paying for your legal bills and theirs and everything. It was a lot. Those are the ugly parts of having a studio. And I told you at the end, I was like, I'm gonna tell you if I'm going to have a studio ever again. The answer is, I still would, but I would have something very small like this. I would have something for me, something where like a friend would just come and shoot, something that if I don't book it out, I'm not out of a lot of money. I was gonna use the space anyways. I would do something like that. But the really huge studio space, I really wouldn't because I don't think that it's gonna make you more creative. I don't think that it's gonna make you shoot more. I don't think it's gonna make you more money because while you might make more money running someone else's shoot, you're no longer running your own shoots. And that's important. I wish somebody told me. I have since fired that agent, the manager, and I've since my career has gone back up and I'm so thankful for that. If you want to make more money from your photography, I want you to click right here. This video is gonna show you how you can add an extra 20%, which should theoretically double, if not triple your revenue. And this is something you're leaving on the table. This is something you're not even charging for and you have every single right to do it. All right, thank you so much. I'll talk to you next time.